everyone my name is jenna but you guys can call me jen welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new hi hello welcome to the start of another weekend of vlog how are y'all doing hope y'all well happy international Women's day <laughs> i didn't even realize that today was that day so my video that went up this morning was very apt for today specifically and also this month so hi i am about to run out the door for my piano lesson and then coming home and having a relaxing friday i wanted to pop in and start this vlog so put my bench back under <laughs> there we go because <laughs> i was practicing a little while ago so that my fingies kind of know what they're doing do i have time to cut my nails got like 30 seconds okay let's see <laughs> they're a little long i didn't realize that until right now yeah it's the weekend things are lovely. I don't really have anything planned other than on Sunday I have my friend Sophie has a show for a play that she wrote and we're all gonna go see the it's a reading it's not like an actual show of the play but it's very fun because she's getting a lot of buzz for it. The local newspaper here did, did a feature on uh, her and the director that are doing it and it's pretty cool. Like, my friend actually like wrote a play and we're gonna go see it. It's very fun. <laughs> I'm very excited for her. Other than that, I got nothing planned. So, and that's like afternoon on Sunday. So, everything should be wonderful and great. Other than that, just gonna do some reading, some writing and all that jazz, you know, the standard. I have started reading Brisinger, Brisinger. How do you guys say the title? Cause my friends, when I said it, <laughs> months and months and months ago when my friends was like how did you just say Brysinger and I was like Brysinger and she's like that's wrong and I was like oh is how is, is it Brysinger I hate that <laughs> but I've been calling it Brysinger so I apologize if I've been annoying you guys <laughs> whenever I say Brysinger but anyways I'm gonna be reading that I also hope to read some other things power three like Lore of the Wilds I might also have that is just a dust jacket because I wanted to start it last night but I didn't I have all of these Oh, and one of my other library books is like sitting way over there. I got some library books that are now overdue that I really want to read, but if I bring them, I, I can't renew them. <laughs> so I'm just going to be a little criminal and hold them hostage for a couple more days. So I should really read those as well and get some more like little fantasy read before I commit to diving into the second James Eilington book. But we'll be doing that very soon. <laughs> I'm very exciting about it. Very excited about it. All right, piano book has been installed. Get my shoes on. <sighs> Gosh, golly, what a time to start a vlog, but yes. So going to do some reading, of course, and also some writing. In a perfect and lovely world, would love to get a whole bunch of writing done this weekend. So I think the goal that I'm gonna set for myself right now with you before I run away and do my piano lesson is to hit 40k and or to finish part two. It's a lot of writing, it's a lot of work to do, but I want to get a good chunk of this done, get into the momentum because it's already March 8th. I, I like, oh my God. So I don't have any time, I don't have any time. So this weekend, we're gonna get some writing done. When I get home today, we're gonna get some writing done and to jump into one of the books that I'm reading I'm taking, I'm gonna think I'm gonna take my time through Brisinger, or Brisinger, however you say it, and see when I can finish that, even though it is the final book of my friends pick my TBR and that video needs to go up. It should have gone up today, but because Brisinger wasn't done, I just put something else up, but that's okay. We make do. Anyways, I'll chat to you guys later. Let's go play some piano. <laughs> this opportunity hello friends to let you know i got two new rings today um they are supposed to be uh, flat like this sort of but i got them just like a half size too big so i've bent them a little <laughs> so that they sit like this on my fingers and this one 
I don't know if it'll focus on it rather than focusing on me. It's hard to say, it's hard to show you, but this one says it's got a little A, it's got a little F on it for Ari and Finn. Anyways, Ari and Finn, and this one has a K and an L on it for Kier and Lottie. Uh, this is my little gift to myself to commemorate my two books being out in the world. It's a little late, <laughs> but that's okay. But yeah, if you didn't know, I'm such a ring girly, so having these two editions is perfect. It's perfect. They just, they, I mean, they feel so good on my hands, like they're meant to be. Anyways, I'm gonna make my tea now. <laughs> I'll focus on it now. Oh, there we go. There's a little A and the F for Ari and Finn. And this is. Oh, it's overlapped a little bit, but it's gonna cure a body. Hold on. <laughs> there we go. K and L for Kier and Lottie. My tea tastes disgusting, so we're gonna try it again. <laughs> we're gonna make an English breakfast because I don't really care <laughs> if it's nine o'clock at night. I also don't have any tea that's not caffeinated. So, I don't know what happened to Earl Grey tea, but it's bad. I love Earl Grey tea. This one tastes like straight up like bad licorice. And as someone who doesn't even like licorice, bad licorice, even worse. What the shit? <laughs> All right, take two. <laughs> Scratch that. We're making a hot chocolate. <laughs> I shouldn't have that much caffeine <laughs> in a day. So, a chocolate it is instead. Okay, so, small thing. A potentially really big thing. I've just changed Mary's name. She's still called Mary. Don't panic. But, I realized that there is a cozy fantasy coming out this year called the Honey Witch in the main character's name, Marigold. And yeah, it's a perfect name for my character. She really is, a Marigold just works as a name for her. But in my like heart of hearts, I know that I cannot have the same name as another cozy fantasy. I just, especially one that's witchy because I feel like, it, I know no one's gonna think this, but in my head, I'm like, what if people think you stole the name from her? Which like, that's ridiculous. Names are ephemeral, but I want to be unique. <laughs> So she still goes by Mary for the majority of this book, M-E-R-I. And I just Googled real quick names that have the nickname Mary. A name just popped up and immediately I was like, that's her name. That's her name. I don't know where I've been, I've been searching for her name and Mary Wynn is her name. Mary Wynn. Her name is Mary Wynn. I've changed her name to Mary Wynn. M-E-R-I-W. Hold on, let me find the right spelling of it. I just typed it really fast and it didn't even look. Also, I'm holding my phone in my other hand. It's very strange. M-E-R-I-W-E-N, Mary Wynn. I just think it works. And Google tells me that this name, M-E-R-E-W-E-N, Mary Wynn, like the, the full name means like sublime delight. So changing the spelling a little bit to Mary Wen is like, it works, but like sublime delight. How beautiful of a meaning that is. I love that so much more, but then because Marigold, the name, the name Marigold, the word Marigold, get out of here. <laughs> I wrote it down originally at the beginning of this little book. It means grief. Marigold means grief. I don't think Marigold's mom or Mary One's mom, Mary's mom, would have named her that. So we're changing Mary's name. She still goes by Mary, but her name is now Mary Wen. What do you guys think? Just don't tell me you hate it, cause I love it. <laughs> Anyways, we're starting this writing journey with 32,150 words. And now I'm going through and I'm changing every instance of the name Marigold in this book to Mary Wen, because I that just fits better in my heart of hearts. I don't want to copy anyone else's work, so. Mary Wen it is. And I don't think I've ever heard the name Mary Wen before, so. And it works, it feels very fantasy to me. And very specifically, like, it feels not like the other fantasy names that I've used in this book so far, which works really well because Mary is Faye. So she would have an interesting name. It wouldn't just be a like a, the name of a flower from the mortal realm. It would be something from the Fae realm.
<laughs> Did you just see the idea hit my hit my hit my eyes right then? We're gonna make up a Fey Realm flower that's called Mary Wen. And it's gonna be very important to our girl, Mary. Update. It's now Mary Wen. Mary Wen and Zanby. But Mary and Zanby. Uh yeah, just thought I'd update you on that. <laughs> Cause that's kind of an important thing to update you on. The name of the main character is different. I hope you guys don't hate it. Cause I fucking love it. So and that's all that matters. <laughs> One day I'll have another ring on this finger or the other finger and it's gonna have an M and a Z for Mary and Sandy. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna get back to it. I gotta get, get some writing done because it's like almost 11.30 at night. So let's hope, let's see if I can get a little bit of writing done today and then we'll <laughs> start the real process tomorrow because this Friday evening has been just nothing. <laughs> it's just been me sitting on my couch rotting, which is usually what my Fridays end up being. But I kind of want to, I want to do a little bit of productivity. So we've changed Mary's name. My counter at the top tells me I need to get 2,200 words down today to still be on track for my deadline. We'll see what happens. I don't think I have 2,200 words in me, but who knows? I might be able to. We'll see. But yeah, Mary Wen. Mary Wen. <laughs> words hit 35k who am i i don't know time for bed now i'm sleepy <laughs> hello beautiful friends happy what is that must have dribbled on myself happy saturday my goodness gracious i back home after an afternoon of tackling the outside world i went to the library first picked up this stack of books and returned a couple books. I didn't return one of the ones that's overdue and I feel so bad about it, but I really want to read Emily Wilde's map of the other lands. <laughs> like, right, like soon. So I was like, I can't, I can't fucking return this because I really want to read it. So I feel so bad, but I returned three books and then I have these here. And then I went to Old Navy, did a return. And then I went all the way to my indie bookstore to pick up one of my pre-orders that I completely forgot I had an order, like had arrived because I got the email like March 2nd um, and I just completely forgot about it. So I have that in here also to unbox with you. And then I went to Walmart and walked around there and got a few products and a few grocery bits that I did need. Now I'm back home. Now I'm back home. That entire time I was listening to You Exist Too Much by Zaina Arafat and I finished the book when I got home. Listened to it all in the time that I was doing my errands and that is why I love audiobooks. <laughs> So did I like You Exist Too Much? Not really. I gotta be entirely honest. It was, I don't think the book for me, it was an entertaining listen as I was going about my my errands, but like, I don't think it was for me. It follows a main character who is Palestinian living in New York as she is like navigating her queerness at the same time as coming to terms with her love addiction and going to a like treatment center for that and then coming home and like nav and navigating multiple of her relationships and like what she does in her relationships because of this love addiction. I really hated our main character. <laughs> I also hated everyone around her. <laughs> And I did, yeah, I don't, I don't really think it was for me, but I am glad that I read it because you can never, you know, read too many, too many Palestinian books, I, in my opinion. <laughs> Anyways, happy that I did that because I read another book and that was one of the books that I returned to the library today because I was like, I bet I could probably just listen to it and I would be okay with it. Love that for me. Anyways, the books I got from the library, a couple of them are books that I requested the library buy, which is always a thrill when you see it added to your holds list. Absolute thrill. So the first one is What Souls Are Made Of by Tara, um, Tasha Suri. I was about to say Sara Al Arifi. That is not, no, Tasha Suri. <laughs> this is part of the classics remixed that, oh God, I don't know what publisher is doing this. Fievel and Friends is doing, this is a, this is an imprint of Macmillan. This is a YA book and I got it mainly because Tasha Suri is one of my favorite authors. I have tried to read Wuthering Heights because this is a remix of Wuthering Heights. It's a retelling of that classic novel by Emily Bronte and I just, I hated it. <laughs> I was reading it. And I feel like if anyone is gonna make me love that classic story, it's going to be Tasha Suri, you know? So 
I had to request it from the library. I also had the, I like requested this graphic novel, Confetti Realms, which is by Sunadia so Shama, Sarnesa Haktu Ishoru, no, Ishiru, and Mike Myers. So Nadia Shamas, as you guys know, is one of the authors of my favorite graphic novel, Squire. So of course I had to pick up this next one, which is very exciting. I oh I'm already I'm already so excited for this because I've just heard wonderful things. I also picked up The Blighted Stars by Megan O'Keefe. This is a sci-fi I am so excited for. I oh I just <laughs> I cannot wait. I did not realize it was coming in this soon. <laughs> and it's blurbed on the front by one of my favorite sci-fi homies, sci-fi authors, J.S. Dews. I'm so excited. Or Dows, or however you say her name. So I am so amped to get into this sci-fi series. And lastly, I picked up <laughs> Mark Lawrence's The Book That Wouldn't Burn for the second time through the library because first time I got it, I didn't have a chance to read it. I probably won't have a chance to read it again, but I have it. <laughs> just in case because <laughs> you guys know my march tbr has you know just the most chunky fantasy books so do i have time to put another one on that list absolutely not anyways book i ordered <laughs> book i ordered it's the sunlit man by brandon sanderson which is the last of his original secret projects kickstarter that he was doing and yeah i know he's announced another one <laughs> so i'll be waiting for whenever that one comes out i don't know what it's called and i've decided not to back it even though i did back the kickstarter originally for these four because i wanted the audiobooks through that i'll just wait until it's out on random streaming services and i'll listen to the audiobooks through that anyways that was my day today what a day and i walked around the bookstore for a full long time i managed to leave without buying anything extra i was letting myself just enjoy the day because it was also extremely busy going to old navy on a saturday at 2 30 is a bad idea <laughs> So going to McNally after that, like it was busy, but I went in and I got myself a London Fog from the restaurant that's in there. And I just walked around the store and I just didn't let myself even consider buying a book. I thought, I thought about it so many times. And it's an issue of mine that whenever I go into a bookstore, I need to buy a new book. Um, but I knew because I was picking this one up and I'm also on a book buying ban. I can't do that to myself. I've spent so much money in the first two months of the year, so I need to chill. And I also just got, I didn't tell you guys this, I just got a new stove and a new dishwasher. So, and I just spent like $350 on the install of my dishwasher. And the guy's like a handyman, so he did a bunch of stuff for me. He like fixed my faucet. He fixed, uh, he recocked my shower. <laughs> and he just came over yesterday and fixed my door because the bottom kick plate of my door fell off in the fall and I needed it replaced before <laughs> spring comes in because I don't want like bugs coming in because the gap at the bottom of the door was like this big. So he fixed that for me. And so it was like $350 and new appliances, which thousands at that point. Well, not, not thousands, but like $1,800. And my car insurance is coming up. So I'm like, I need to stop spending money, you know? So book by Ben it is. And all my groceries today were only like $70 versus the usual 100 plus, which thank fuck. <laughs> And I didn't really spend money. I actually returned some stuff and I got money back. So it was a good day. Didn't spend any extra money, I should say. And I got some library books to show for it. And I listened to an entire book today. But yeah, even though I didn't really like it, <laughs> I listened to an entire book, which is great. Anyways, I think I'm going to do the journal spread for that book and uh, probably start listening to another one because I'm just in the mood to get through a couple books, like a couple shorter ones that I have laying around. I think I might do Lore of the Wilds next and then we shall see where we get to. But yeah, it's now, really it's only that time of the day, 6.37. I don't know why I thought it was later, but I should also do some writing because of that productivity last night fucking hit. I got almost 3,000 words down last night, which is amazing. Hit 35K, which I wasn't expecting. We'd love to get some more writing in today, get some good chunk down because we are still hoping to get at least 40,000 words this weekend. Hit that 40,000 word mark. I feel like with this story, with uh, Airman Book 3, I'm really just slowly telling myself the story and I can already tell that when I go in for the second draft, I'm gonna have to do a lot of like trimming and cutting and like making it more concise because I feel like I'm just meandering through the story at the moment, but that's okay. I can let I can let myself do that 
meander, tell myself the story, that kind of thing. Anyways, I am just going to hang out here and uh, keep going with my evening. Yeah, I don't really have anything else to say about You Exist Too Much. It was just fine for me. So if you like literary fiction with a kind of unlikable narrator that kind of examines love and obsession and addiction in an interesting way, definitely pick it up because I think it does really well with all that kind of stuff. But that's just not my kind of book, you know? Which is totally fine. I'm glad that I read it, but it wasn't a fave. <laughs> Anyways, I'll catch up with you guys later. What, what the actual shit? <laughs> I just finished Lore of the Wilds. I haven't felt this much betrayal. <laughs> I don't want to believe it. I came out of fucking nowhere. This book was so good. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I was a little worried going into it because there's just so much hype around it as like a, a self-pub book that was just about to be self-published and then was picked up by a publishing company. This was so good. The entire time I was like, I just, I'm so deeply in love with all these characters. I don't know what to do with myself now because that it, what the fuck was that ending? Oh my God. Also two books in a day. Who? Am I? Okay, so. <laughs> I literally don't know what to do. <laughs> I don't know how to feel. I'm so mad. I had no idea where this book was going throughout the entire thing because it kept taking turns that I wasn't expecting to the point of like, there were some things in here where I think I don't, I, I don't think it was fleshed out enough in some little instances or like I might've missed one little thing in dialogue that was said because I feel like we kind of skipped over some stuff, but like, also, I don't really care because this was great. <laughs> what the fuck? Dude. Oh my god, so this is about Lore. Homegirl on the front here, who I fucking love. She is amazing. She lives in this little human village that's been kind of trapped and like corn cordoned off by like a, a kind of a forest, and there's lots of sentries standing in the forest that are very mean to them and whatever. And so they're trapped there, no one ever leaves and she runs an apothecary shop with two older people who took her into a shelter when she lost her parents when she was very young and now that she's older she looks after these kids as well like she helps out at the orphanage and stuff or what they call the shelter but one day a couple fae come to the shop asking for the person who runs the shop using her like thinking she's like if these guards want whoever runs the shop they're gonna take auntie away like the girl the, the woman who like basically like raised her from the age of nine i can't let that happen so she goes with them instead and she is basically brought to a kingdom against her will even though they give her the option you know there she is tasked by a lord to enter a library that is cursed because nobody no one who is fey can go into the library otherwise they'll die or something she is tasked with going into the library basically like sorting it out and and trying to find these texts for the lord like classifying and like basically being a, a data entry girly <laughs> in this library and the library is so cool and it starts like speaking to her and she like meets this wonderful guard named asher who like is her guard and she's got two little minions or whatever that like help and like run around and stuff for her and she's She's very lonely here because none of the fae like her or will get near her because they have so many stereotypes and premonitions against humans. She gets to know Asher and they share lots of fun moments together and they start falling for one another. And then she finds this book in the library, it like calls directly to her and she knows immediately like if this is one of the books that the Lord is looking for because it's magical. And then something happens to the book where it like connects itself to her and then she starts having magic or whatever and she tries to escape because she finds out some stuff about her town. Like in that escape attempt, she ends up messing up the whole situation for her and the guard Asher and she, and she kind of, you know, <laughs> they go running off into the forest together. And that's not even like the first 25% or no, maybe it is about the first like 30%. I can't remember exactly where that was, where that ended. But like, I thought this book was going to be filled with that magical library. And I thought that that and like the palace and stuff was going to be the setting for the whole book. It is very much not. And I was so curious because the, the author, Annalise Brana, is sh shared art for characters on her Instagram, which are so beautiful of lore of Asher and of 
Grey, Laura's best friend from like growing up, and also two other characters that like we don't meet in the first half of the book. And I was like, how are they gonna meet these two? Because Finn is cute. And I remember when Annalie was, because <laughs> I've been following Annalie on Instagram for so long. I remember when Annalie was like look, like reaching out, asking for self-publishing advice. This is when I was about to self-publish a second story, right? So I reached out and like we chatted and all this kind of stuff. We kind of had a rapport going. And I remember telling her like, my these are my characters i showed her my cover and i was like this is Aryan finn and she's like no way i have a finn too and then she showed me her cover at the time which was a black and white version it wasn't in full color she's like this is my finn in the corner and i was so excited to meet her finn because apparently i was like well my finn is a sweetheart and he just is so charismatic and full of life and she's like well mine is the exact opposite <laughs> he's kind of an asshole and i was like i cannot wait to meet your finn so i was like i want to meet her finn and then i did meet her finn and oh my god everyone in this book that <laughs> lore is surrounded by is such a sweetheart and i just so glad that i liked it this much wow <laughs> wow <sighs> i also ran you exist too much through cop pile i haven't yet filled out the actual writing page but i've got the journal page filled out and it ended up being just three stars it was just fine <laughs> but i can't discount it for like for it's it's not a bad book so three stars what a day <laughs> read two books oh my god and it's now exactly midnight and i low-key want to do some writing so i'm gonna ruin my sleep a little bit and i think i'm gonna write but i'm gonna write in bed i think i'm gonna take my little computer and go sit in bed and type away and i'm gonna stop myself at 1 a.m i should get just under an hour of writing done if i get ready for bed and, and go write tomorrow i'm gonna go see my friend's show at two so hopefully i can get up and do some productive stuff beforehand i don't know if any of you guys are anything like me but if i have anything to do on a day I always plan my day backwards. This happened even when I was working retail. Like if I had a shift during the day, I would always plan my day backwards and my day just never would start because I would be in waiting mode until I went to work and then everything after, even if my shift was like in the evening. Hopefully I don't sit in waiting mode tomorrow. The show starts at two, so I gotta be there at like 1.45. So if I gotta be there at like 1.45, it's about 20 minutes away. I give myself a half hour in case of traffic <laughs> I have to leave at quarter after one so I have to be ready to go at one <laughs> so I have to be you know just like mentally ready to go at 12 30. <laughs> like it's one of those things I just keep like working my way backwards so hopefully tomorrow is not too much of a waiting game and I can actually do something. Now I feel like I can focus on some bigger books again I don't know I felt like I was in a little bit of like a tie up this week after I had finished Eldest and The Shadow of What Was Lost, I just, I felt like I couldn't bring myself to read anything. Even though in my head I was like, I could probably finish Bricinger before the end of the week and then have that vlog up for you guys, the My Friends Pick My TBR vlog, because I still it's still not done because I just haven't read Bricinger. <laughs> like, I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm like 90 pages in. Maybe I'm more than 90 pages in. No, I'm about 90, 95 pages in. I need to just read this so hopefully tomorrow i get good work done on this so i think that's what i'm going to do tomorrow other than writing and other than going to my friend's show and then probably going to mom and dad's for dinner tomorrow this is going to be my focus because i do really want to get through it and yes i'm reading this version of it not this version <laughs> did i did i update you guys on my hellscape of these i don't think i did i did on tiktok i feel like i might have in my last vlog talked about how i've tried to find a copy of brysinger that matched aragon and eldest my copies of aragon and eldest because i have the original first trade paperbacks that were published by knopf for young you readers um they're the soft eight by five inch paperbacks they're the most glorious reading experience and in my head i was like i just want to get a whole matching set of paperbacks like this and so i have bought so many different copies like this one here this little itty bitty one is my fourth brysinger copy this is my second brysinger copy and i uh, the third one that i got was accidentally hardcover and broken so broken like the spine was just dead and the first one i got was this one but with a broken spine as well like physically like it <laughs> sat on my shelves like sideways i can't even do it with this one because the spine is actually good but it was it was bad in my endeavors to find one that matched i was looking up isbn's and i was looking up their measurements online so like if i found an isbn for a book for a bricing or paperback copy that didn't match the one that was on these copies so it didn't end in 59, I would then go put it into the search engine, <laughs> look it up and find like the dimensions of it. 
and measured it against the eight inch by five inch copies that I had. And this one, the ISBN said it was pretty much exact what I wanted it to be. So I ordered it, it came from Germany and it's not the right one. And I got so sad. I mean, like it's a really cute little international copy, but like, no. <laughs> and then I sent out a plea to the internet. I sent out a, a TikTok being like, please help me. And everyone was so helpful in the comments and they were trying to find these books for me. A lot of the people, especially the fellow Canadians that I follow were like, yeah, I have mismatched copies. I have the two paperbacks, Aragon and Eldest, and then I have hardcovers of Breisinger and Aaron and Inheritance that match, like the covers match. Nobody in the comments had a Breisinger copy that matched. And so people were lovely and were sending me like Pango books links and stuff. And I just like, none of these match. Like the ISBNs are the wrong ISBNs. Like they're not gonna match. They're gonna be this big paperback. So I went on a little investigation. I found one in my creation of that TikTok, I wanted to tag the proper publishers for it. So I found out that Knopf actually combined with Doubleday in 2009. And then, so like, and, and these books were published in 2005 and 2007, in 2009 and then 2011 or something like that. Like they, they published in like those two year increments. So they published crossing over that joint venture of publishing imprints under Penguin Random House. At the time it was just Random House. So it was Random House had Doubleday and Knopf and then they became Knopf Doubleday. So I was like, hmm, I'm a little sus about that because anytime you have a change in publisher, most often you're gonna have a change in what the publishers are doing, found an interview or an article, a Publishers Weekly article from 2011, right before the release of Inheritance, that explained they repackaged the paperbacks with the release of the Breisinger paperback. So they repackaged the paperbacks into the ones where it's the same vibe, it's the same images of the dragons, but it doesn't have the border around anymore. It's just the dragons and it's a smooth paperback and the spines have like little images of the dragons. Like there's a very specific paperback that's out there that's not the new ones that are out that were like the re rebranded ones. They are repackaged paperbacks so they're not the og ones they just don't exist i got so sad alas now my hunt begins for hardcovers of aragon eldest and breisinger that match my inheritance copy and i'm being particularly picky because i want it to say knopf on the spine this one does not say knopf but my inheritance copy has the Knopf publisher symbol on it. So I want them all to match like that. So I'm just gonna be very picky as I hunt for those copies. <laughs> and there was a set on Facebook Marketplace that I reached out to the seller and I was like, are these still available? And I didn't hear from her in like 24 hours. And she said, no, sorry, they sold today. I was so sad. Cause there was like the first three and they all had Knopf on the side and they were all hardcover. And I was like, this is exactly what I need. They sold, anyways. That's my whole conundrum with uh, these copies. Annie who's all, but yeah, now I'm on the hunt for the hardcovers to match. And I will just keep the paperbacks of Aragon and Eldest as prized possessions because they are my favorite reading experience of all time. I don't know what it is. Those paperbacks are the best. Anyways, I've been talking for too long, but yeah, this is what I'm gonna focus on tomorrow. I don't know where I was going with that story. I think it was just an update. I've now been talking for an extra 10 minutes, so I have 10 minutes left of writing time, but I'm gonna go settle into bed and we're gonna do a little bit of writing today because I do wanna keep a little bit of momentum for Aramount Book 3. Anyways, oh my God, my phone just keeps falling. I'm so sorry. That's the update. Hi, I read two books today and now I'm gonna go write some, some words for my own book.
Hello friends, happy Sunday. Happy almost Monday. <laughs> I am just doing, I'm gonna get, look how tiny these little oranges are. Look at them, they're so little. Oh my God. I'm just making myself a snack of these. Making myself, i.e. peeling it <laughs> now and, and sectioning them so that I can put them in this little itty bitty bowl, snack on them in bed while I'm writing. That's what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go in bed. I'm gonna sit and set up like I did last night and do some writing because I feel yesterday was just a really productive time when I decided to sit in bed and write. So might be counterintuitive to my mission, if you will, to make my sleeping schedule better. Anyways, I wanna get some productive stuff today done because I did absolutely nothing productive today. Forgot the time change was last night. So all of that waxing poetic yesterday about not wanting to be stuck in waiting mode today before going to my friend's show it too. Just waffling, I guess, because it's fucking time change. So I got all bent out of shape anyways. So I did absolutely nothing before going to my friend's show. Went to my friend's show, which was so lovely and so fun. It was so neat. I've explained it a few times. She's gotten, she got a couple writing grants last year for a novel and a play and that kind of stuff. And through her play one, she also got to like run a workshop kind of a thing with the play where she got to see it like acted out and then she like workshopped it and you know, all that kind of stuff. This this year she reached out to, or got reached out to or reached out to, I'm not sure, the village conservatory here where I live. They it wanted her to put on a showing of it, which is really cool. But it ended up just being a reading of it because I think the cast only actually physically sat together and read the play together, like a read through of it twice before today. They did a fantastic job. So it was just them reading through the lines of the play. I mean, a sort of like pseudo dramatized style. Our friend Callie, who is the dramaturg and producer of the show was like reading the stage directions off to the side as kind of like a narrator to like set the scene. And then the actors who were playing those parts would like stand up and, and do just the dialogue of the play. They were so in character already and it was so good. It was kind of like seeing a visual podcast, which is something that you guys know I love. Like I watch so much D&D, right? So <laughs> that was so enjoyable and it was so fantastic. And all of us were just, I don't know, I'm so proud of my friend Sophie, and Sophie, if you're watching this, I am so fucking proud of you for doing that. Oh my god, like my friend is so genuinely funny, and sometimes I forget that my friends are like funny people. She had the whole, like her writing had the whole gathered amount of people, which was like a lot of people, laughing and <laughs> chuckling at statements and little funny anecdotes and stuff. It's a very Manitoban play, so a lot of the Manitoba quips were very good. <laughs> Very on point, because that's where I'm from, Manitoba, Manitoba, Canada. And so, yeah, it was fantastic. I really, really enjoyed that play. And I think everyone did fantastic. After that, um, a bunch of us went out for dinner. Sophie didn't come because her parents were taking her out for dinner with her partner. So they went out elsewhere. But a bunch of us were just like, yeah, let's go. Let's go for food somewhere. And we ended up going to this beautiful little cafe that I've never been to. But it was so tasty. And it was a lot of fun. We, we, it was like a super, super early dinner. That's all right. It was delicious. And I took home a cake I ate earlier and half of my meal, which I also finished earlier. I haven't done any reading today at all. So the plans to get progress done on Breisinger were out the window, but you know what? Uh, that's fine. I'm good with just sitting on the couch and vegging. I did end up doing the Lore of the Wild bullet journal spread. Here, I'll show you that. Yeah, I finished up writing all my thoughts for the You Exist Too Much one, and then I did the Lore of the Wilds page, which I'm quite happy with. It's kind of hard to see in this light, but I did like a patchwork underneath and then found some black pages in a magazine and then cut out the shape of trees, much akin to the shape of the silhouettes of trees on the front cover of Lore of the Wild. <laughs> I ended up rating it four stars in case you were curious. Yeah, so I'm gonna get in bed with my oranges. I got both my earphones in for the ambiance. Gonna get my <laughs> tunes going. And I'm gonna see if I can hit 40K.
I did it and went a little overboard <laughs> and it is now 2 a.m. But the chapter's finished and the chapter is way too long, but that's okay, that's for editing me to deal with. What a fun little chapter I just wrote. Kind of bright, kind of lovely, discovering some stuff and the uh, foundation of a new friendship just started. Incredible. What a day, what an evening, what a writing session. I don't know if you could see me run at some point to go get this little book and also my notebook and a stack of sticky notes because I was trying to find, because I swore I read it in this book. I didn't, but I thought I did. In here, this little green witch book that I bought for research for this book. I thought I read about tinctures versus infusions versus teas. Um, it's not in this one. It's in a different book that I had originally got from the library, which I then retook out of the library um, because I feel like I'm going to need it again. And I want to do a little bit more studying on that kind of a stuff when I'm building Mary's own little magic system and things. Oh my god. We did it, friends. We hit the 40k that I wanted to hit this weekend. Whoa! <laughs> Incredible. All right, I gotta go to bed. My computer's having a little freak out. I apologize if you can hear the, the fan because it's loud. Anyways, hi friends. It's officially Monday and I'm popping in to close out this vlog because it is also 11.15 at night. <laughs> and I have been just editing this vlog all day. Fun updates. I have decided to make myself undergo a challenge to finish the draft of Aramount Book 3 in 20 days. And I've also realized that it's probably not going to be an 80,000 word draft. It's probably going to be a 100,000 word draft. So that's writing about 2,900 words a day for 20 days straight. Will I have enough wherewithal to write tonight? Maybe. So I'm going to be documenting it on TikTok and also doing a vlog for it. So we'll see how that goes, but 20 days to finish. Like 60,000 words? <laughs> Cause I apparently am a glutton for punishment, but I told myself so many times that my deadline was gonna be at the end of a month and I just kept pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. And so now it's like, I would love to have a fucking finished draft so that I can leave the story sit and come back to it and start making it better. <sighs> so we're gonna undergo a little challenge and like keep myself accountable kind of a thing in multiple ways and see, see what happens in the next 20 days. I'm just flashing back to all the times where I've said, if I ever say, I'm going to complete a 70,000 word novel in 30 days again. Please someone come and do something and stop me. And here I am trying to finish a draft in 20 days and it's probably going to be another 60,000 words down. Alas, the things we do for creativity. <laughs> I feel like I need to do something like this though, like to really just push myself into the creativity because the past couple months, uh, the beginning of 2024, I just have felt so <sighs> lacking in the drive to write this book, even though I've like really wanted to be in the story and I've brainstormed for it. And I've also had like a lot of creativity with the brainstorming of, of different stories and stuff like that. If you watched my writing update video that went up a number of weeks ago, it's just been actually getting myself to write is the issue because all I want to do is make something that is already established better or brainstorm something brand new. So actually drafting was just not the vibe that my brain wanted to do, but I need to actually draft this fucking book so that I have something to make better. <laughs> You know, that's going to occupy my time for the next little bit. 20 days, 20 days, and I'm going to have a finished draft for this book. So hopefully, fingers crossed, wish me luck and get ready to follow along. If you're not following me on TikTok already, please do, because that's where you'll see all my updates. <laughs> and then there will be a vlog going up in April documenting the success or failure of that. We'll see. Anyways, I'm going to leave this vlog here. This weekend was wonderful and amazing. I ended up reading two books this weekend. I ended up reading A Lore of the Wilds and also You Exist Too Much in the same day. <laughs> so I got lots of reading done in one day only. I also happened to go see my friend's show, which was so lovely and spend an evening with my other friends at the same time. We had dinner together, which was so nice and calming and genuinely wonderful. I happened to get a lot of writing done this weekend. I hit 40,000 words, which is awesome. That was the goal. We started at the beginning of the week at 31,000. Hold on, I have it written down in my Scrivener. Started on March 8th at 32,150 words. And as of yesterday, we had hit 41,359 words. So we did it. We hit 40K, which was the goal for the weekend. Very happy with that. And maybe I'll even get some more writing done tonight. I just have to finish editing this vlog and get it up for you. And it is now <laughs> just after 11.15. So I'm going to call it here. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys so, so much. Let me know down below how your March is going. And if you're reading anything interesting, I would love to know. And if you think I'm a fool 
for, t for going on this journey once more. And also what you think of the name Mary Wen. The updated name <laughs> of my main character for this book. Anyways, I'll catch you in another one soon. Stay kind and keep on reading.